Okay, so this video is way overdue. Uh, this is the follow follow up on the weekend at Mid Ohio a Memorial Day weekend. Uh, my first trip to Mid Ohio uh, was really enjoying the track. Uh, I was the only spec E46 there, so it was really just um, learning the track, feeling out the car, uh, and just enjoying the weekend. This was race one, um, lap two. Basically, coming out of um, the keyhole, the the 180 um, here, at the end of the track, coming down the back stretch, coming down, shift, coming down the back stretch through a little bit of a kink, start seeing a little bit of you know uh, data anomaly in the in the in the speed trace. This vertical line, uh, maroon line here, is ABS fail. Um, so at that point, something's going on. Um, as you continue through the, down into China Beach, so here's the the tire traces. So um, start locking up brakes going into China Beach. So coming through here, get to the breaking point, no ABS, um, lock up the wheels. Obviously at that point, I'm not stopping. I go flying off into China Beach um, and just ultimately make a mess of it. Um, as you can see simultaneously here, this blue, navy blue line is the engine temp, water temp. Uh, it's beginning to climb um, until, I mean, I got to think at, at this point now I'm, I'm basically out of wa engine water. I'm trying to nurse the car through the rest of the lap, uh, just trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, I missed the fact that uh, I missed the engine temperature until I'm past the pit entrance. Um, and really at that point the damage had been done. I get the car back to pit road, pop up the hood, uh, see the in lower radiator hose had popped off, get towed back to the pits, back to the paddock, um, car won't turn over, let it cool off, still won't turn over, um, pull a pull spark plug one turn it over turn the motor over and water shoots out of the spark plug hole like a like a like a squirt gun so obviously at that point we knew we had done some damage uh and that pretty much wrapped up the weekend for us and uh brought it home at that point um knew the engine was dead went and sourced junkyard motor and um this video is sort of the process that i went through of getting that junkyard motor installed
Okay. That's pretty much all that. I hook the engine harness and cry underneath and get the drive shaft off. Take the transmission cross brace off and then get the engine mounts off. Easy peasy. Yay. You get the clutch out. I got the I got the hood off, got the plastic trim off here. Um, let me just check in a few more connections. I got the reverse sensor uh, plug on the transmission unplug. Uh, there's a gas line back here, fuel line, I mean, and um, really just checking wires and getting the wires unplugged from the box. So. Okay, so I've also got for the pump out to the, um, or whatever that's called, the harmonic loop. Um, this grounds off. Power to the stars off. Um, coil lines disconnected. Engine harness is disconnected. Got the nuts off the engine mounts. Headers are unconnected, transmission mounts gone, shift linkage is gone, drive shaft is disconnected, uh, reverse switch is disconnected. I think that's it. O2 sensor harness runs along the firewall instead of being connected to the block. And those are in the Y pipe, so those don't need disconnected. Ah, oh, I think, let's see, the clutch is disconnected. I think that should be it.
be it. The transmission should come off. Okay, it's starting to come off. Never forget about that one. First thing I need to do is um, get the starter on this. I want to, before I spend too much time on this motor, I want to uh, turn it over a couple times and get a compression check. I think I can do that without even putting it in the car. So I got to put the only way to mount the starter is to put the transmission on. So I think it's got to do that. Hey, that's actually not too bad shape. I mean, that was. This is the oil filter that came out. I don't know if it's original, but... <laughs> okay, so there's the jerry-rigged compression test. Compression tester, cylinder six. Motor's ground, the battery. Got the, the, the heavy lead from the starter. And then the... And the 10 millimeters like the energizer circuit to the 10 millimeter uh, connection. Yeah, this is kind of hard to do one handed, but I might go put batteries on that. We'll see what we can do here. Okay, so, I'll do it. so I'll do this so you can hear it. And we've got oh, what is that? One sixty low low, but for junker motor we'll take it. Unfortunately we got a little cut down here. So well, just to make sure we gotta clean that out real good. I mean, it's just a mess down here. Definitely signs that oil filter housing gasket's starting to leak. Um, just lots of crud. Rusty bits. Like, it's just really rusty. It's just sort of unexpected. I mean, did the gasket seal the whole damn thing down or what? Oh, 
Oh, this is crusty. Very crusty. Lots of varnish. Oh, no, that's too bad. And this thing is like bread toll. Holy cow. Lots of sludge in here. Oh man, lots of like sludge. Well, maybe not perfectly maintained. There are tons of varnish in here. Scoring on the camshaft lobes. No milkshake, so could be worse. Definitely oil leaking around these center seals. Oh my goodness, it worked. All right, so wrapping up the, the engine swap from uh, the blown mo motor from mid Ohio. Uh, the last bit is the bottom, um, the oil pump with the upgraded aftermarket version uh, and I didn't do a video on it before so this is sort of giving me a good opportunity to so here's the the stock um, oil pump single nut reverse thread and already like this is I don't know if it's waddled out or just loose but uh, anyway I gotta get this off take all this off I got a new one over there 17 millimeter reverse thread, ready Lucy. Oh. oh yeah, try not to lose anything down in the motor. Yeah, it goes. Comes off. Well, it's just 10 millimeter. And the kit, I'm pretty sure it just comes with this and this. I think the internal part stays. But I went ahead and pulled everything from the blown motor to transfer over. So here's the difference. It's a, a <clears throat> modified shaft that um, uses a couple locking nuts in addition to center nut. So a lot more robust than just that one one nut in the, in the center spindle. Looks like the spline's a lot longer too. If it runs deeper, it'll come out the back side of this. Maybe to give it a little bit more stability, I don't know.
M6 is the standard torque is like 10 newton meters, so go with it. A little extra inf. Thank <laughs> you. 